And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Kindred Gnosis. That's right, this is going to be our very first Kindred deck and we're going to, uh, you know, kind of have like an, an aristocrat style deck for those of y'all from MTG. We're going to be sacrificing, which basically just means like where you're sacrificing small units. And we're going to have two brand new champions here, Kindred and Gnosis at our top end. So Kindred, this one, like they, they both care about um, slaying units. And basically what it means, let's see if we can get the description there. So whenever you kill a unit via damage, kill effect, striking it with an ally, you know, self-killing like ephemeral doesn't count as it says. Um, but whenever you specifically kill your own unit or your opponent's unit, then that's whenever you slay stuff. So this is going to be our very first time playing Kindred with this effect. Um, and so whenever we, we, if we have Kindred in play, we slay something, then we get to mark the weakest enemy. And at the round end, boom, just kill that enemy that we've marked. Should be pretty awesome. Um, we're going to be pairing uh, Kindred with Gnosis because Gnosis gets plus one, plus one each for everything that we've slain this entire game. So Gnosis is going to be huge one thing that i love about gnosis is not only is it like you know just a, this huge fear or something but i love this champion spell that gnosis has siphoning strike has looked really strong in the games we played so far so i think that's just a wonderful um champion spell so we're going with the three kindred three gnosis other top end cards we got this new sanctum conservator um, whenever you play it if we've slain 13 plus units then we kill all of our enemy followers and get an additional copy of it. So we get two eight fives that are half fearsome. All their followers are gone. So if they have champions, they gotta be blocking those champions um, on that thing. That thing looks pretty crazy. But yeah, we're gonna be killing our own stuff. We're gonna have things like Spirit Leech, Ride Negation, which is the new deny that's looking pretty strong. We're playing, and then we're playing a lot of one ofs in here because we have a lot of card draw and card selection. And so I think one ofs are gonna be important, right? Like it's, I think it's nice. Like I don't want. I don't want my board to just be filled with undyings in this kind of deck. I don't want three undyings, but I want to have access to one because we have a lot of cards that kill our own unit and undying, the undying is something you can just continue to kill over and over and over again. Right now, tons of people are playing landmarks. I think landmark destruction is pretty important. So we have one copy of Desert Naturalist for all these uh, landmark decks running around. And so like having all these one-ofs is nice whenever we're playing Stalking Shadows because you know we, we get to really dig through our deck more with Stalking Shadows and then with also drawing more cards with Spirit Leech uh, drawing two. We still have a Glimpse Beyond in here to draw two, kind of be like our fourth Spirit Leech basically drawing a lot of cards like that. Also got a Ride of Calling in here to be able to tutor up a champion. That should be pretty sweet. Um, and that's kind of our deck. Besides that, we have like these things like Fading Icon, a lot of things that make multiple bodies. Fading I Icons, two bodies, Dune Keeper, two bodies, you know, Warden's Prey, Curse Keeper. These things are all two bodies because we are going to be wanting to kill our own um, allies a lot. So it should be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Kindred Gnosis. Okay, well, pretty expensive looking hand. I'm thinking about just sending it all back. Sejuani Renekton is going to be aggressive. Yeah, I, I want cards that cost one and two. Okay, we got a couple of cards to play. That is nice. I guess we'll just lead with the Dune Keeper that attacks for four. You, you know, I won't have this Ephemeral to sacrifice later, but we'll have... The, um, we'll still have this Warden's Prey. And that's fine. So that's, you know, us slaying another thing. Our deck looks pretty weird. I 
guess I'm just going to do this, see what we get as far as our other card that we could play. Okay, cool. Mage Seeker Conservator. That's a good card. You can see the Gnosis is really growing quite quickly. I think I was overwhelmed. No mercy um. Okay. So I have Kindred this turn. Finally, lots of Gnosis. Lots of Gnosis. Seen tombs, towns, and everything in between. Please work. Like, if this works, this is awesome, right? So, okay, so we just slayed something. So now we mark their weakest thing, which is that thing, and then it just dies. Wow. That is incredible. Wow, what a combination there. That is incredible. And now we just have this 8-8. Ah, they're going to exhaust my kindred. No, kindred. That exhaust card is really cool. Okay. This would give plus three, plus three to my Gnosis if this works. Plus two, plus two from the Siphoning Strike, and then also an additional plus one from us slaying something. And it looks like that works, so that's 11. And I'm gonna have this Caretaker here to be able to challenge whatever they play for, they could block. Gnosis, if they because they kind of have to play something that's they can block fearsome, what do you make of that? like that thing can block fearsome, and then of course we get the plus one plus one there because we just slayed another thing. That's new. Revoking it. So do fourteen. All right, so now Gnosis has. Spell shield and all their things get the minus one, minus zero. Cool. And so Nasus having spell shield is going to be really good for these other siphoning strikes. Yes, right of calling. So that right of calling will draw another kindred. And now we can dawn and dusk, get two copies, and they have spell shield. <laughs> Oh, have I slain 13 things yet? I have not. I've slain 8. Alright, we're, we're getting there, Sanctum Conservator. We're getting there. Don't worry. Look at these, like, little... I don't know, these little... What are those things? Like, these little beetles? Bugs? There's a good name for those, but... Yeah, he said this is where we want atrocity. Yeah, I think getting to this part of the game, though, it may be difficult. Um, but yeah, atrocity would be nice here, but that's okay. You think this thing's way too hard to activate? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Siphoning Strike is busted. Scarabs, there you go. That's what that's that's what we're talking about, scarabs. Oh yeah, I can kill a mana gem. I don't even have to kill an ally. Here, let's do this thing. Draw two. Let's see what we draw. Yeah, we okay. We just had a Gnosis on top. Oh, that's Gnosis, not not the one I want, not Kindred. Dawn and Dusk. Dawn and Dusk. Dawn and Dusk Gnosis. 
Because they can just use like one pump spell and block. Let's get two more. <laughs> this looks awesome. Got a win with style. The Jackal Cackle. Okay, there we go. We got our Jackal Cackle. Kindred Gnosis. GG's. Oh, another Kindred deck. We got a Kindred Mirror with Elise. Um, okay, Mulligan that. And I guess, yeah, we, we just mulligan Gnosis. We don't need to keep it in the opener. Yeah, because we'll find... By the time it's turn six, we'll find another one. Concurrent timelines. Okay. For the rest of the game, there's nothing that shows it. For the rest of the game, whenever you, the first time you play a follower each round, pick one of three followers with the same cost to transform it into. Okay, so it's not like kill it and then transform it. Okay, so that 3-1 gets turned into a 3-2. So yeah, with them playing concurrent timelines and playing these two regions, the likely thing is that my opponent is going to be playing... Um, Wow, they're just not attacking or anything. Uh, sorry, the likely thing is that they're going to be playing Ledros and then trying to have Ledros turn into um, the Dreadway for a one-shot kill. Let's go with this thing. I could do the exhaust right now, but I'm going to do this first and kind of see what they play. So I can I can kill their lease with exhaust with one mana, but I guess they could maybe kill my spear leech though too. I'm just gonna attack. You want to trade with either one of these? That's fine with me. Wow, nothing. Not trading anywhere. Not trading anywhere. And they just want to keep playing a really long game, it looks like. I'm thinking they have Vengeance, right? I'm thinking that I play Kindred, they Vengeance Kindred. I mean, that's, like, their plan. Yeah, this would be a good Hourglass matchup, for sure. Hourglass was a card that, when we were building, eventually got cut. Um, we do have, we have the two four mana, like, denies, right? Like, so, like, those are, like, the denies would be awesome. Like, that's actually, like, the card we need to draw, right? Because then, like, that can even stop, like, their their whole plan of, you know, like, the Ledros skill on the stack. That thing can stop that. And stop, yeah. Shark Chariot, that's interesting. They get a Jack the winner? Yo, that's what's up. That makes no sense. Alright, what are you going to be, Gnosis? So you're going to be a 5-5 five five right now. We have lots and lots of cards, right? I have like basically, I have like twice as many cards as they do. You dare. You wanted wrath. We enter an age of men and I kind of want them, like, if they're going to use like vengeance. Like, I feel like they have Vengeance, right? Like, if they're going to use, like, that kind of card, I'd rather them kill Gnosis before Kindred, right? Like, I'm, so I'm going to try this. Uh, 
that thing turns into a 1-3. That's a very good 1-3. Yeah, this concurrent timelines has looked pretty busted, right? Like, turning... Right, like, they got the Jack the Winner with whatever, you know, like, that 5-drop, and then getting a Funsmith with the 4-drop. So they do attack with stuff that my and my Gnosis blocks. You must know me, little one. You must. Yeah, then that would be the Gnosis striking for 10 plus damage, and we would be able to level up Gnosis. Lock the doors. Okay, so we're at six. Um I need to find the deny card. Yep, there's vengeance. Dust. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to glimpse beyond that. <sighs> Boo. Touche. Remember me, little one. Please. He'll be mine. He is for the other. Yep. And they hit it. That's just one that's just a kill. You have a sixty percent chance of hitting it. <laughs> I need the deny card, and but you know, like I tried with the, I tried drawing two there before with my glimpse beyond, but become meta. So, so yeah, expect expect to see a lot of that combo. It it's it's really good, like that that combo and how you can set up all defensive. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that specific deck will be, but just what combo, just concurrent timelines and Ledros. They're both real, like they're both really good cards on their own. That's definitely going to be um, very popular moving forward. So, the. Okay. Let me do the prediction thing. Okay, so it's a two card combo. So, it's just the one mana card that they had earlier in the game, concurrent timelines. That's the new card. That says whenever you play a uh, follower, you just trans you immediately just transform it. It's kind of like invoking. You look at three cards, three other followers, that three different followers besides it that cost the exact same mana, and you just transform. You get to choose which one you want to transform your uh, follower into. And so it's so then you just play Ledros and you put the Ledros skill on the stack. And then you transform the Ledros into a different nine cost follower. There are five different nine cost followers. One of them, and the one that you want to hit, is the Dreadway. And so you have a 60% chance of hitting the Dreadway. And if you do hit the Dreadway, then the Dreadway says all of your spells and skills, all the damage is doubled. And of course, the Ledros, then the Ledros skill would resolve and it'll deal double, dam 
double damage. Ledros already dealed damage equal to half of your Nexus, so if you double half, that's a hole, so it completely kills you, and you can't stop it. Well, I mean, you can't stop it, but you can deny it, but... Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, Kordak, they, they did the combo. And killed me. Yeah, you can still get Bright Steel Formation also, right? Yes, yeah, so like it's 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 a really solid combo. It's going to be it's definitely going to continue to be a part of the metagame. Oh, yeah, I guess we are playing against Reckoning. I guess I was kind of yeah. I guess I don't I don't know why I didn't even realize we were playing against Noxus. I guess maybe I don't I don't know if my opponent played any Noxus cards. I guess I I didn't really even think about Noxus. And reckoning. Yeah, I didn't. I was kind. Of, I was. Yeah, I was. I was talking, not really paying attention to what we were doing. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So I don't have the exhaust, but I'm going to just pass the turn with them not doing anything. I like them not developing their board more. Um, they they have to like have like something that would keep that would. Um, yeah, you would think that they would have something that would keep me from killing their ash. You would think. Okay, right of negation, very good. So we're at two. We've only killed two of our own things so far. Or we've only yeah, we've only killed two things. Yeah, maybe our deck could have like one ruination instead of this the Sanctum Conservator. Yeah, you know, like we we want to try it. You know, it's a it's a brand new card. We want to try it, but it 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 does look pretty difficult to pull off so far. And so yeah, maybe maybe something like a ruination could be nice. Key want the ride negation in case of another like maybe they're setting up another reckoning maybe. Winter, take you. How is this thing not leveled up yet? It's only at three. We stand in the footprints of past long trodden. Those were ours from another time. Yeah, it's probably probably a bunch of like harsh winds. I think things like that. So, yep. So I'm just trying to make it more difficult for them to kill me immediately. By playing the 8-5, you know, I'm just trying to get more things that could possibly block. Alright. That's lethal. I got really destroyed by that Reckoning, and then Ash is still amazing. Kind of saw the problem with playing the Exhaustion for our removal instead of, like, Black Spear. Is if they Frostbite our stuff. Um, I think we can keep both of these. 
Yeah, I got a mirror match. Got a mirror match. I don't know if I go with the caretaker immediately. Maybe not. Man, it truly is a mirror match. Save a little bit of life with that 0-1 block in. And, you know, I'm going to be Caretaker. Wait, do I not have room? Oh, I don't have room for Caretaker on the Curse Keeper this next turn, do I? I mean, I could just open attack. We got 13 coming in. And right now they can't block. So it's unlikely that they will block. Embrace life. Death. Oh right, they're not gonna slay something right now. I was thinking, you know, get this in play. For the kindred to slay, but it doesn't slay immediately. Okay. Alright, so I have two things that can block. We can always rely on you to keep us safe. Well, that's nice. The chains, they never stop. They could be slaying my curse keeper, which will just help me out. I mean, I'm not really scared of the... Yeah, I know I could have Siphoning Strike to the Kindred last turn. I'm not scared of this Kindred, though, because what are they... Like, if I... Like, what are they going to do? Like, mark my Curse Keeper to kill it? Like, they can't even attack. Yeah, like, I, I just block with Warden Spray, and, <laughs> and then it kills Curse Keeper. Um, but now do I? Yeah, I'm just gonna play this thing. Okay, so their their undying just gets burned now. They don't have room for it. So that's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. I also don't have like the most room. I kind of want to caretaker my own undying, but then I only have room for one challenger. Maybe I siphoning strike and just see if I can. See, see, like if we if we bait out like a vengeance or something like that. Okay, nope. I'm not. I I have a lot of resources. I'm not that worried about a ruination. Or something at overwhelm. Enough. 
Alright, gotta figure out how to do two damage. Yeah, atrocity would be pretty nice. See what I've learned? All right, we're doing just fine. Kindler does sound pretty cool, but so this only counts as one. I'm thinking of like the. It is also just an eight-five fearsome in there at two. So I guess I'm just gonna play it because it's an eight-five fearsome in there at two. And they're at five. So they go, you know, they go Ruination, I play Gnosis. If they play something that blocks, I challenge. I don't want to okay, they could still have Ruination now. Man, that would be... If their last card's Ruination, that would be quite the patience. If their plan's... Man, is their plan going to be Ruination? No, there's no way, right? There's no way. We are more than council there's no way. Okay, yeah. All right. No way was correct. Two and two. We won the Kindred Gnosis Mirror. And Piggy. Because you just said open attack, yeah. Oh, another Kindred deck. So it seems like you kind of get paired against other people doing the same kind of stuff. We're getting paired against a lot of Kindred here. Uh, let's see. Um... This looks like a good hand, so I will keep it. I haven't really shown like the power of Stalking Shadows yet. And we'll play the Fading Icon on their turn, and then we'll be able to kill the Prey to make some Saplings on my turn. Um... Okay, no attack. I was going to say, I wonder if I should block or not. Maybe I wonder if I should even caretaker or not. I mean, I guess I do, right? Because then... Do I caretaker? I waste my saplings, but I get three, four... Or, sorry, three, five, seven, eight damage in. There's a lot of damage. And we can, you know, we have stalking shadows. We can find more... Caretakers or whatever. A lot of damage. We're halfway there. Oh, their nexus is almost dead. Oh, you were thinking they're gonna avalanche? Oh man, that would have been a rough avalanche. More caretakers. You'll see me, yes. So block there. Hmm. This close is gonna be leveling up. I'm not really gonna be stopping it.
So two, four, five. They grow up so fast. This will keep Callista from leveling up. I don't know how valuable that was. I just kept Callista from leveling up. Whoa, Pine Peace. Pine Peace, 13 months. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, our eighth sub of the day. We're going to be having some bonus stream after this. We'll, we will play some extra games, have some fun. And Forks. Forks, not Fox. Keeping that Twitch Prime sub going for 11 awesome months. Down to six. Oh, or Mother's Call. That could be a crazy card. Okay, so that's still lethal right now. That's a pretty desperate move. They're gonna have like a vile. Like they would no, they wouldn't have vile feast because they would just play vile feast also, right? If they had like any other fast spell, they would just like play it also, right? The thing is, it probably makes sense for me to play this fading icon unless they have like something that puts multiple bodies out there also. But I think it makes sense to do this. Because I, I'm going to have my zero power thing. Like, if they just play one thing to block, I, I use my, um, my whatever, exhaustion and make the zero power challenge their blocker. And ours, so I basically got an extra attacker by doing that. By playing that thing. All right, so there we go. That was Kindred Gnosis. Uh, first try on the deck. This kind of deck um, is going to be one that's going to take some time to kind of tune, right? To, to figure out, like, what's going on in the metagame, what cards do we want to play, because the amount of cards that you can play is vast. But I was happy with this list. If you want to, if you are looking at playing a Kindred Gnosis list, um, I was very happy with this. So I recommend giving this a try. I think you can you can do, you know, fairly well with it. Is it perfect? No. Um, I think the, the card I was probably the most disappointed in was the Sanctum Conservator. It looks like slaying 13 plus units is honestly really, really difficult. So I would I would recommend replacing this card um, and playing something else. If you if you play against a lot of other mid rangey decks that are playing, you know, like your Ash style decks, you know, Ruination, that could be a good option in here. I think what I would do um, to start with is I would try Rasa. You know, it's still eight mana. Um, it's still, you know, like a, a card you could get to grab off Stalking Shadows, right? Like you can't grab Ruination from Stalking Shadows. So keeping with followers is good. And uh, this can just kind of help your um, help your kindred. If your kindred's already slaying some small units, you play Rasa, slay some more small units. That could be a good idea there. Or if you just want like some other like removal in that slot, like a, um, you know, like a Black Spear or something that kills champions, I'm always for that kind of card. Um, yeah, so that, that could be an option there. Or if you want an atrocity, you know, if you want an atrocity to go along with the Gnosis and Kindred, how that your champions get really big with Siphoning Strikes, and you want an atrocity, that's cool too. Atrocity could work well in this spot also. Like So like these these two slots here, this is the Rekindler, Rasa, these are flex slots for just some, you know, cards that win the game kind of thing, right? So play play whatever you want um, in the, you know, in those slots for whatever, whatever you like. 
uh, that you think can help you win the game. Yeah, so like an atrocity, that could be cool too, instead of that Rasa. Um, but there we go. That was that was our deck. It went went pretty well. Exhaust is just such an awesome spell. Uh, that card is really good, and so is Dune Keeper. All right, um, I was very happy with the one on dying, uh, and Fading Icon looked pretty good. It was just fine. All right, but that's Kindred Gnosis. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button, leave those comments. Let me know what you thought of the list. If you are uh, trying to list out yourself, anything, uh, any takeaways from it, you know, uh, you know, uh, give, you know, give me that feedback. <laughs> that, was, that was a bad stammer there. Give me that feedback. Um, I love seeing those comments on YouTube. Y'all are amazing. And um, yeah, that's all I got to say. So thank you. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> and I really appreciate that. So yeah, leave those comments. Um, and yeah, so thanks for watching. I will see you for the next video. Take care.